my hand shed. Behold, kitty. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm going to show you how I sew my shoes. Um, you leave them in? What? What? Let me let her out. such a strange cat. Hello. Um, I should have tied my hair up. I do not have a bubble. I do not have a bubble. Oh, um, yes, so I am going to show you how, or attempt to show you how I sew my shoes. I do not have a bubble in there. should have done this beforehand, I know. Um, you will hear the cats in the background. I was meant to do this earlier, but as I said, it seems to be much better to use my laptop at night whenever the light's a bit better. So you'll have to excuse the glare of my glasses, I can't find my contacts. So yes, I am going to show you, or I'm going to attempt to show you how I sew my shoes. So, if you want to follow along, go get the bits and bobs that you need, and I'm going to show you how I sew my elastics and how I sew my ribbons. Um, as I said, I'm going to attempt to show you how I do each. I am going to be sewing my freeds, um, mostly because I want to get these sorted out first before I go into my grishkas because my grishkas are easy enough to break in. Um, so yes, as you can see they probably look a little differently from last time. I've squished the box down and I've moulded the shank that little bit that I said I was going to do. So it's already curved. I've also got them dated and labelled left and right. Excuse me. I have my elastics and ribbons already pre-cut. And I have my needle ready, and now I am going to attempt to show you how I sew my shoes. Um, this is probably going to be another long video. And what was that that dropped? Oh, don't tell me I lost my needle. Oh god, I, I've lost a needle. It is somewhere on this floor. Not the needle I'm using, but I've lost the needle. So yes, I'm going to attempt to show you how I sew my shoes. Excuse my boobs. Um, so yes, here is a shoe. It is my left one and I'm going to start with sewing my elastics. I already have them cut. Um, I have them cut into four pieces. One, two, three. Okay, I have three pieces. I'm missing a piece. But yes, I already have it pre-cut. I have my ribbons pre-cut. I probably will trim them down afterwards. But I am going to start with some of my elastics that I took from another pair of shoes because me being the idiot that I am didn't get enough from the shop. So, invisible elastic comes with two sides, a smoother side and a rougher side. In experience, I have found the smoother side is best going on the inside. I don't know why, but whenever I have the rougher side on the inside facing against my tights, it, I don't. It, it seems to rub, so I prefer the smoother side, you know, on the inside, so it's a little bit easier. And where I put my elastics is, you know, where this seam is. I basically put my elastics, basically on that seam, um, and my ribbons will go beside it. Um, I do do a standard chain stitch, the same stitch that I do for darning, um, mostly because it is a more secure stitch and I set my elastic at a slight angle 
So, and where I am going to start, I start at the bottom. I always make sure to go through the fabric but not the satin. And I put in my first stitch through the little holes in the elastic. And along the bottom, I will just do a simple loop stitch. Which is just going in and round and in and round. And as I said, I make sure I go through the canvas but not the satin because I hate seeing threads on the outside. It's a pet peeve of mine. I find it doesn't look as nice. Um, and the only time I have ever done it is with Gain and Mindens because that is near impossible not to do. Um, you'll know yourself if you sewed or attempted to sew Gain and Mindens, it is not easy. So as I said, I'm going through the canvas and through the little holes in the plastic. Try not to poke myself in the eye. I am normally quicker than this, but because I want to show you how I sew my shoes, it's going to be a little bit easier. So that is just that first row done. As I said, I just loop it and then I will chain stitch along the side. Um, mostly because it's a more secure stitch than anything else. Um, well, in my experience, it's a more secure stitch. Um, I found it sits more comfortable against my foot. Um, and it's also one of my favourite stitches. So, Raja, what are you doing? What is with you animals and my rosin? Seriously. Um, these aren't as difficult to sew as my Free Studio Pros. Um, the canvas was seen to be a lot thicker. These seem to be a little bit easier um, to sew for some reason. Well, minus whatever I'm going through the seam. The canvas seems to be a bit easier to go through. Um, when it comes to the drawstring, what I do is I loop it. I go through the bottom of the, you know, where the seam is. Um, I go through the bottom, or attempt to go through the bottom of the drawstring casing. Um, my needle's not coming through. What are you doing, Raja? You know the door's open, you can go downstairs. So yeah, I go through the bottom so it comes out at the bottom of that drawstring. And then I loop it over the top and go through the elastic. So I'm not going through the drawstring casing at all, I'm going over it. My drawstring's already pulled to the fit that I need. Um, and also prevents any risk of damage to the drawstring. Um, normally I would sew through the top and bottom, um, but that comes with the risk of sewing through the actual drawstring itself. And you don't want to do that because your drawstring can snap, and I've had that happen. Um, and I found it keeps it nice and it just keeps it nice um, and close to your foot. It hugs your foot better as well. Um, Raja, what are you doing, Sweetums? What are you doing, Raja? What, Raja? So that is basically my loop stitch. You can see that there is a few, just a little, just there's just four there, um, and it's enough to just keep that close to the drawstring casing. I've not gone through the drawstring casing at all. Um, I've just gone through the bottom of it and over the top of it. So there's no risk to the drawstring getting um, damaged or torn whatsoever. And then I just simply chain stitch down the side, um, which is easy enough done. Um, it's easy enough to do. Raj is exploring and I don't know. She's attempting to jump into the bathtub. <laughs> Jumping and failing. And she's away downstairs to sulk. She's not had a bath yet. I've not risked giving her a bath yet. Mostly because she keeps it, she she's cleaner than the other one. Um, Bagheera, he's a messy little bugger, um, so I do need to bathe him 
more often. Every couple of months, um, they will, he will get a bath. Um, where are my scissors? Um, so yes, that is one elastic done. I said I just did a wee loop stitch along the bottom, chain stitch along the side, and then again a loop stitch at the top, and that keeps that basically nice and secure, especially seeing as my invisible elastic is already damaged from my last pair of shoes, so that way then it's going to prevent any more fraying, hopefully, and then I basically just repeat this over here. Um, I used to do it on the outside, um, but that was mostly to keep the heel, um, you know, to prevent all that bagging at the heel. Um, but because the, the heel of these shoes are lower, um, I don't need to do that. So I basically sew this bit at the heel right beside that seam. I literally go right beside that seam on either side. Um, and I just repeat what I did there. I turn the shoe inside out. Um, well, I fold back the heel and I just do exactly what I did in the last one. I keep this straight, I don't do this one at an angle. Um, I keep the other one at an angle because of the way it sits against my ribbons. Um, so I just repeat what I did in the other one. I'm hoping you can see this okay, as I said, my camera skills are not the greatest. Um, I think my camera's not the greatest either. Um, I'm not the best recorder. I need somebody to do it for me, but I do not have that luxury of somebody doing it for me. So, yeah. Hope you guys have been doing well. I did try doing another video for you earlier. But my phone is being a pain and it's not uploading it to YouTube for me. Um, it was basically a little video of showing you another hobby of mine. Um, I collect pens. Um, I know that sounds really strange, but for those of you who have been with me for a while, you know I suffer from what's called borderline personality disorder. Um, and I try not to talk too much about my mental health um, because I don't really like talking about it to tell you the truth. Um, but because of it's basically the mental equivalent of third degree burns. Um, and you would be best googling it because it's it is hard to explain. Um, well, I find it hard to explain, but I find it hard to explain anything really. Um, I found. So I do advise googling it. Um, there is a website called Mind, which is usually one of the first search results to come up. So it's good um, in explaining things. Um, it helped me to understand um, my condition, so it's really good. But yes, as I said, I try not to go through the satin, I just stick to the canvas. I don't like going through the satin because I don't like seeing stitches on the other side. Um, Yes, back to what I was saying. I was trying to do this video of showing you the different pens that I have, um, the pens that I've collected, um, some really expensive pens, um, and I just noticed I'm not chain stitching this, I'm looping it. Um, some of my the pens I have, um, they were really expensive, but they're brilliant quality pens. Um, so yeah, and I have basically 17 colouring books. So, um, on this second piece, I cut up against the needle, um, mostly because when it comes to the heel, I like to secure it a little bit more. I do do a few chain knots just to keep it secure, um, but then I also just tie the threads just to be a wee bit more secure um, and to prevent the thread or the stitch from coming out 
So that is one elastic. Laptop, what are you doing? Thank you. Sorry, my laptop decided I want to go to sleep. So yes, that is one elastic. Um, I did the exact same at the heel there. I just have those few stitches. Um, I've gone over the drawstring. I've not gone through the drawstring casing. I've gone over it. Um, and that just it helps pull it up a wee bit more as well because it pulls up that whole thing. Um, so it is, it is a little bit easier. It does make the shoe hug more to your foot. So I am now going to repeat the other side. Before I move on, well, I'm going to re-thread my needle first. Elastics, sorry, attempt to do my elastics. I made a bit of a boo boo. Um, I tried to sew through both of my elastics. So, yes, my ribbons will go on the right side of my elastics. And what I do is I basically fold it up a bit and then I fold it again so I don't have a raw edge. Um, because raw edges can fray. Um, and even though I've already seared it with a uh, lighter, um, it can still fray and I just basically put it right beside my elastic and I just sew around that entire square. I do the exact same thing that I did with my elastics. I do a row along the bottom and then I chain stitch up the side, a row across the top and then I chain stitch down that side and that's that. So. And that is one complete shoe. I will usually trim these down after I've tied them, um, just to see how much. Um, depending on the length, sometimes the length of them is fine. Um, it also depends on whether or not I double wrap or single wrap. Most of the times I single wrap, um, but depending on whether or not I have the enough ribbon, most of the times I just single wrap. But yes, that is one shoe broken. Um, one shoe broken. That is one shoe sewn. Um, as I said, I did the exact same as I did with my elastics. I don't know if you noticed, but along the side, I sewed my ribbon and elastics together. It basically keeps the two together and it just keeps that part nice and pulled up. Um, so it basically makes this part of the shoe, it literally makes it hug my foot so I don't have any gapes. There's no gaps or anything. Um, and it just, it's a nice streamlined look. So the, f the shoe is going to mould to my foot better. Um, You'll notice some people fold the heel down to find where they put their elastics and ribbons, or where they put the ribbons. I've sewn that many point shoes, I know where my elastic and ribbons go. So that is one shoe. I am now going to, to do the other one and then I am going to break them in. Well, I'm going to attempt to break them in. Next shoe. Okay, so you may be wondering how um, how I know how much to fold back. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but you know the lines in your fingers? Well, each space is half an inch. Um, if you look at your little finger, you should have two lines. From your tip of your little finger to the first line, that is about half an inch. From the first line to the second line, that's another half an inch, and then from the second line to the bottom of your finger, that's another half an inch. So your little finger is usually about an inch and a half. Or that's something we were taught in class to help verify this. Here is my measuring tape, my old measuring tape. 
Well, just under an inch, actually. Actually, no. Tell I. It's actually an inch. Sorry. No, it's not half an inch. It's an inch. Um. No. Ah, no, I see. Right, from the tip of your finger to the first line, it's an inch. From the first line to the second line, that is half an inch. So those little gaps there, that is half an inch. Um, just it was a wee trick we were taught in class. Um, if you didn't have a measuring tape, how to basically measure. If you go onto your next finger, then from the tip of your finger to your first line, it's an inch. And then from the first line to the second line, that's another inch. Um, so yeah, that's where I was getting confused. Um, the first part from the first line to the second line that is half an inch and on your next finger that's an inch um it was just it was a wee trick we were taught in uni of basically if you didn't have a measuring tape um you could go by the lines on your fingers so that is how i know how much to roll up um if i roll up that much that's sitting at half an inch i go half an inch half an inch um so i've basically rolled up an inch um and it keeps it nice and secure and it's just, it just means there's no chances of a raw edge. So that's how I know. Um, I haven't been in uni, I finished uni what, five years ago? And can I remember any of it? No. I can remember bits of it, but that's about it. But I suppose that's the same with anything. Can any of you actually remember what you learned in high school? Or as well, we call it high school and secondary school, I don't know what you call it. Or the Americans call it even, because um, you just have so many different things. You just have like uh, sophomore year and freshman year and stuff like that. We don't have that over here. Um, we just have first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, you know, so forth. Um, in primary school, we have P1, P2, right up to P7, and then after that, we go into high school, which is then first year, second year, um, and so forth. So I think our firsties, our first years, are your freshman years. Um, I'm not sure, um, so I'm not very familiar with the American education system. Um, so I'm not sure how, because I think your college, your colleges and universities are different to us. Um, I think for you it's like a big thing getting into a specific college whereas over here it's not it's the university that's the big thing um college is just like an advancement um from high school it's just you can just specify in one area and then in university you can progress in that area and then you know go on to do whatever field you wanted to do um i'm not sure how it is with the american system hello raja hello raja Hello, Raja. Raja. Hi, baby. Come here, then. Raja. No? Okay. Raja's came up the stairs. Come here, then, Raja. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Have you come to say hello? Hi, baby. Powering. That's Raja. That's shoe sewn. That is both shoes sewn. Um, I am now going to change into something decent, warm up my feet, and then break them in a little bit. So. Is it?